What's going on guys, Medicine in 3 Minutes, back here with another video, and today we're going to be talking about Alzheimer's. We're going to get straight to the point, we're going to keep the subject clear, brief, and illustrated. So let's get started. So here is a brief uh, summary of the video, uh, everything we're going to be talking about, uh, about summed up. Uh, so basically we're going to be talking about how the brain changes physically and chemically, um, also neuro neurologically. We're also going to be looking at the treatments. We're going to be looking at um, some of the uh, reasons why Alzheimer's becomes uh, Alzheimer's. And also we're going to be looking at um, what traits do people have that have Alzheimer's. So the first thing we want to look at when we're looking at Alzheimer's is actually going to be uh, the production rate of acetylcholine and norepinephrine. Now, when the main thing that really causes Alzheimer's is a very, very uh, high drop in both of these. So yeah, there's going to be the production rate is going to drop significantly. Now, here is a photo of uh, a human brain. Now. As you can see here, there are the enlarged ventricles are very spaced out. As you can see here, the flattened sulci and the cortical atrophy are very uh, abnormal. And what basically goes on from here is that there are these plaques and these tangles that uh, are actually going to chemically uh, react within the brain. And this is going to cause uh, Alzheimer's uh, in the most part. So... Um, we basically think that it's at least 15 to 20 years of amyloid plaque accumulation before there is actually going to start to become an effect uh, or a tipping point. And then this basically tr uh, triggers uh, a chemical cascade that causes clinical symptoms of the disease. So basically after 15 to 20 years, that is when the patient is actually going to start to feel the side effects of this uh, of Alzheimer's. Now this is because um, we have this chemical called talk and it's going to actually convert into tangle and that is basically uh, with this accumulation of talk converting into tangle over 15 to 20 years it is eventually going to add up so to such a high uh, significant amount that uh, Alzheimer's will eventually become to form. Now uh, a crucial neurotransport protein called TAW again uh, it will actually become uh, hyper, <coughs> sorry about that, uh, hyperphosphorylated, and it twists itself literally into tangles, um, which will eventually shock the neuron from inside. Now, from a genetic standpoint, um, there is a gene called APOE4, uh, as you can see here. Uh, basically, this gene is a variant that actually increases amyloid. Now, what happens is when a person has Alzheimer's, um, there is a very large amount of this gene, and when this gene is present, uh, it generally triggers Alzheimer's. However, uh, there are some exceptions where this gene does not uh, trigger Alzheimer's. Now, when it comes to the characteristics and the, uh, and the traits of people with Alzheimer's, generally, uh, it actually affects women it's more dominant, it's more present in women. Um, it affects people who have a family history of uh, Alzheimer's or dementia, so it may be your aunt or your uncle had it. Uh, you might have a higher chance. If uh, there's a trisomy 21 when uh, the patient is still at the form of a baby, and also uh, if there ha has ever been any significant head trauma in the past, this could actually trigger uh, Alzheimer's. Now, it is important to note that 50% of people in retirement homes actually are dealing with Alzheimer's or dementia, so that is very important to note, and that is mainly because uh, Alzheimer's does not start to form until over the age of 65, so that's where you'll find most people with Alzheimer's. Now, there is a series of steps uh, that actually occur in order when one is dealt with Alzheimer's. Uh, so first of all, the person uh, begins to lose track of time. So their notion of time begins um, to disappear. They are almost uh, unaware of, you know, what time it is, uh, what time of the week, if you were to ask them is, um, what month are we in or what time is it right now, they wouldn't be able to tell you. Or they would, they would be almost convinced that it is a different time of the day or a different time of the week. 
Uh, secondly, after that happens, the person will begin to uh, not be able to put names to faces or they won't be able to recognize people anymore. And that is uh, the second stage when they are not able to recognize faces. Thirdly, they won't be able to recognize um, w where they are. Now, if you were to maybe if they were in their home that they have lived in for 40 years, uh, you were to tell them, where are you right now? They wouldn't be able to tell you I'm in my home or they'd assume maybe I'm at my cousin's house or somewhere that is not right. But they would be they would not be able to recognize somewhere that they would have easily recognized in the past. Fourthly, uh, they won't be recognized. Uh, they won't be able to recognize um, who other people are, literally. Uh, maybe their son or their daughter um, were to come up to them. They wouldn't be able to tell you that is my son, that is my daughter. They would not be able to differentiate between uh, other human beings. And lastly, they won't be able to tell where they are. Um, you, they might. This is one of the common traits of dementia, uh, where a person will literally start to panic because they are not able to notice where they are in the world. Not even um, they don't even have a notion of literally the continent that they're in. Yeah, so that is that is in the very um, last stages. There is something very important to notice between um, vascular dementia and Alzheimer's. Now, the main thing that uh, is very important to note is that when it comes to vascular dementia, there is going to be a focal deficit. And when it comes to Alzheimer's, there is actually no focal deficit. Now, we did cover this in a previous video, but just a little reminder, this is how you can actually tell if someone has uh, dementia. Um, so you want to look at the person's face, first of all. If the person uh, looks at you and smiles, and one side of their face is drooping or is more down than the other, it's not really symmetric as it should be, um, you, you might possibly be dealing with dementia. Again, with the speech, uh, you might want to ask the person to repeat a short phrase. And if their words are slurred, this could be a sign. Again, with their arms, uh, you want the person to raise their both of their arms uh, at an equal point. And if one of them drifts downwards gradually in a short period of time, uh, you are most likely dealing with dementia. Again, uh, when it comes to time, uh, you must get that person to the hospital as soon as possible. Do not delay this because the earlier uh, one can get diagnosed or even treated, uh, the better for them. Okay, so now when it comes to the progression of Alzheimer's. Now, first of all, uh, you want to, the first thing that's going to get affected is actually lesions start at the hippocampus. Now, the hippocampus is generally where memories are first formed, and this is why the person is not going to be able to um, uh, have very good memory at the beginning. Now, uh, the second place is going to be the plaques and tangles are going to start to move towards the limbic system and the center of emotions, and this will really start to tamper with the person's um, personality and all of their characteristics and traits, as it does affect their emotions a lot. Thirdly, um, it will eventually reach all the way to the frontal lobe, and the frontal lobe is what's responsible for any uh, logical thinking, any, lo any thinking that involves... Uh, yeah, and basically anything that involves any logical thinking. Number four, um, it's going to eventually reach the parietal lobe. And this basically determines the orientation of the body in space and its relation with the objects around it. So this will um, basically tell the body, okay, now I am sitting down, now I am standing up, uh, I'm jumping right now, I'm about to land, etc. Now... Uh, eventually, once it passes through the parietal lobe, um, the lesions will attack the occiput, which uh, actually con uh, controls distant memories. So this is, for example, uh, any childhood memories that you had, um, any any memories that you've had for a long, a very long time. This will, this is, this is what's going to affect it. Now, uh, the centers that controls the heart of the lungs that controls the heart and the lungs are the last to be affected and eventually since these are vital organs when these are affected um, this will result in death now uh, we have not actually found any uh, cures to Alzheimer's yet but there are a lot of things that can actually 
delay the effects or slow down the effects. Uh, the first one that we can find is actually uh, any long-acting uh, cholinesterase inhibitors such as tacrine, donepezil, and rivastigamine. Um, again, another another thing that you can use is any antipsychotics for hallucinations, so such as uh, respiridin. Now, it is important to remember that at the beginning, uh, the reason why Alzheimer's is created is because there's a decrease, uh, a decrease in acetylcholine. Now, these three are going to be able to produce it uh, while creating also a, a norepinephrine. And that is the reason why uh, it slows down the effect. Because while the rate of production is getting decreased, these are actually used to increase the production, which will eventually slow it down. Now, again, here is a little overview of the video uh, of everything we've just learned today. So, yeah. Before we go, um, sorry that it is in French, but um, I'll, I just want to let you guys, I just want to suggest a little book for you, maybe something to help you relax. Uh, it's a really, really beautiful um, book with some amazing scenery. Uh, it's, it's set in the Butchered Gardens in British Columbia, which is in the, in the west of Canada. Uh, there's some amazing scenery in the book. Uh, yeah. Definitely go check it out. And if you speak French, there is a French version, as you can see here. Uh, yeah, there is an English version and a French version. You can find it on Amazon, Kindle, Kobo. So, yeah. Uh, I just want to apologize for the length of this video. This was a very uh, long and heavy topic. So, I wanted to uh, really uh, go over most things that you need to know uh, on a basic level. And again, this took over 12 minutes. So, yeah, I just really want to apologize for that, guys. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. If you're new, make sure to smash that subscribe button. Leave a like. And don't forget to leave some comments down below. Let us know if there's anything we can improve on, anything we did wrong in the video, anything we didn't uh, make clear in the video. Definitely, yeah. So thank you guys so much. Have a good day.